OpenAI just released a massive update to ChatGPT called Code Interpreter, and it's available to all Plus users, and it's one of the most powerful and useful updates to ever come to ChatGPT. So in today's video, I'm going to break down exactly how to use it and what it is, and my top 10 ways to use Code Interpreter to take your learning and work to the very next level. I'm going to be using practical examples, and I'll even give some bonus ones at the end of this video, so be sure to stick around. Now, although it's called Code Interpreter, it's not just for developers, and anyone can use it. So let's dive straight in. So Code Interpreter is available on GBT4 to ChatGBT Plus subscribers, so you need to have that $20 a month GBT Plus subscription in order to access it. If you do, just head over to Settings and then Beta Features and switch on Code Interpreter. You can then activate it from the GBT4 drop-down menu under the plugin section. And then when you do that, you'll then see there's a little plus button next to where you normally enter your prompts which allows you to upload any type of document you like and add a prompt to go along with it. You can also drag any file over the window and it will also upload it into ChatGPT. Now, essentially what this does is it enables ChatGPT to use Python script and handle uploads and downloads in a secure environment. The best way to think of Code Interpreter in basic terms is it's like having a very junior programmer at your fingertips. So the first thing that I tried with the Code Interpreter was actually uploading a photo and then seeing what Code Interpreter could do. So in this case, I took a cute picture of a Labrador puppy and uploaded it into the ChatGPT prompt window. And as you can see, it does a pretty good job of breaking things down and describing things for us. Now, I want to take things a little bit of a step further here. So I then got ChatGPT to actually describe a prompt that I could then move over into something like Midjourney or Dolly to generate my own AI version of this image. And let's just see how that happened and what it looked like. And actually, the results were pretty cool. I think you'll agree this is a pretty cool looking AI generated puppy. And there's lots of other cool things that we can do with images too. We can zoom in and out, we can actually pull off the color palette from a particular photo, we can change the color grading, and we can even upgrade and change the resolution of an image to make it slightly more high fidelity. We can crop it, we can spin it around, and lots of other things. And I'm gonna be diving into this a little bit more later on in the video, so be sure to stick around. One of the coolest things you can do with ChatGPT Code Interpreter is to actually create a QR code that then you can use for things like marketing or pointing people towards your product. For me, I used my website, alexanderfyoung.com, and asked ChatGPT to create a QR code. And as you can see, it did this really, really quickly. And if you scan that QR code right now, it will take you to my website and you can sign up to my newsletter that goes live every Thursday and Sundays, covering tech and AI and lots more about learning and human performance. Now, the next thing I tried out with Code Interpreter was actually using it for something that I do every day, which is project management. At both my companies and in my personal life, I'm pretty organized and I'll often map things into an Excel chart or use productivity software like Asana or Monday or ClickUp to organize everything that I'm doing to ensure success. But this can be really, really time consuming. And if anyone's filled out a Gantt chart, you know it can take absolutely ages. In this really practical example, I took a project we're currently working on at Verti, which is all to do with surgical training, and I put down the actual outcomes and the deadlines we needed to complete things by, and then uploaded it into ChatGPT and asked it to output a Gantt chart into a CSV file. And you can see that it runs some Python code and it was able to do this pretty nicely. If I wasn't sure what the project was, I could even use ChatGPT to map out the different steps towards a specific goal. Now we can also take this a little bit of a step further and download that CSV file and then upload it into Asana to populate our Asana project management, which then we can share with our team. Now this next prompt with Code Interpreter is gonna be especially useful for anyone who's studying at the moment, either in their professional lives or at school. I'm a massive advocate of using spacing schedules combined with active recall to learn as quickly and effectively as possible and to negate any of the effects of the forgetting curve. But actually creating a spacing schedule and study schedule can be really, really time consuming and a little bit tricky if you're new to getting started. So what I've done here is I've downloaded the outline of a spacing schedule from the internet and then I've fed it back into ChatGPT using Code Interpreter. Code Interpreter can then break this down. I've also used it for more of a zero shot prompt where I'm just saying something like, I'm revising for medical finals exam in about 12 months time and I want you to map out all the topics I need to revise for and then put it into a spacing study schedule that I can then apply myself. And as we can see, ChatGPT again does a really good job here of breaking down all of the topics and then using a spacing schedule, in this case I use Super Memos 1 which is quite widely used, to then plot in times for revision sessions to ensure that I don't forget things. 
I can then download this in Excel or CSV format, and then I can use a color system to decide what I've mastered, what I'm still struggling with, and what is really, really hard so that I can then prioritize what I'm revising towards that exam in the future. I've also put a link in the comments down below to a study schedule that you can download right now to save you even more time. Now, one of the things that I've spent ages scouring the internet for is ways to convert files into different file types. Often this might be a PDF into a Word document, a Word document into a text document, or one type of video file into another and it can just take absolutely ages. Luckily, Code Interpreter is here to save you tons and tons of time. You can upload pretty much any file from a PDF to a video and then just ask it using prompts to actually change it into a new file type. In this case, I converted a PDF pretty quickly into a text document and also a video file into an audio file and it worked really, really nicely. Okay, so the next use case for Code Interpreter is really helpful if you're studying a subject like maths or physics or you're working in an industry like engineering where you're doing lots of complex mathematical computations and equations. Code Interpreter can run some pretty complex math equations and produce graphs and other things. In these examples, I'm putting in lots of different mathematical formulae and equations and then ChatGPT is outputting this as graphs or breaking things down. And remember, this can be used to manipulate large data sets as well. So if you've got a large data set of numbers or something from a research study that you need to run a deep mathematical equation on to pull out the results of, like say, for example, calculating the p-value or the impact of a particular intervention in something like medicine, then you can do that through ChatGPT rather than having to use paid formulae equation software, which can be very, very expensive and difficult to use. ChatGPT's conversational element breaks this down and makes running these complex math equations really, really easy. Now, just before we dive into a bunch of prompts that analyze big data sets, which is one of the best use cases for Code Interpreter, I wanted to throw in just a really, really practical and straightforward way that we can use Code Interpreter right now to save us tons and tons of time. And it's this, you can just upload any document and then analyze that document very, very quickly, pulling out or summarizing any information that you might need. Previously, you might need to use a ChatGPT plugin to do this or a separate website, but now you can upload any PDF document, like in this case, a biology or chemistry GCSE study module, and then ask ChatGPT to summarize things or pull out relevant information or even turn things into questions for you from this. Now, this is super helpful if you work in an industry where you're dealing with very, very large documents and you need to quickly find something or you just need something summarized. And it's also gonna be really helpful for both students and teachers when it comes to analyzing things like projects or homework Work, which might be sent in in a Word document or a PDF format. Okay, so Code Interpreter saves us loads of time when it comes to analyzing big data sets. But before we actually get to playtime, I just wanna tell you about one quick website where you can download data sets very, very quickly, plug it into ChatGPT and play right now after you've watched this video. And that website is called Kaggle. It's great for machine learning engineers and you can search from a variety of different data sets and download them. In this case, because of my background in medicine, I've downloaded a healthcare data set looking at cardiovascular vascular disease across a number of different centers around the world. And this data set is huge. Okay, so now we've got our data set. And again, this could be absolutely anything from scraped web data to things you downloaded from Google Search Console to this case where it's a lot of health data. You just drag and drop it into Code Interpreter. And then we can ask ChatGPT to analyze everything contained within that data. We can ask it to segment the data, pull out trends, and even create graphs as I've done in this case. So rather than having to traipse through all of that data, which might take hours and hours of our time, we can actually ask Code Interpreter to pull off the graphs and Code Interpreter can actually format lots of different graph types and it's pretty smart at understanding how we want to see the data and what the best graph type is. For me personally, along with the Kaggle data that I've been playing with, I've also practically been using Code Interpreter to analyze the responses from surveys that I've been using for a lot of my businesses, either for marketing or for analyzing how people are actually using our product from tools like Mixpanel or things like Google Search Console. You can download a CSV or Excel file and then upload it. In this case, we've got a survey here about how people are using AI in the workplace. And then I've asked ChatGPT to create some graphs and even put those into a PDF document that can be then shared. Now, it's not perfect at creating PDF documents, and if you want a report that looks really stylish, you're still probably better off getting an actual human to do it, but it's a really nice touch, and I would imagine that this will get better and better with time. Most importantly, it saved me lots of time when having to analyze all of the results of the survey and find some quick trends, and it even produces things like word clouds, which are great for sharing language of your customers or your users with both your product team, your marketing team, and your wider audience. It's not just graphs and word clouds, 
clouds that code interpreter can output too. It can also do some really cool things if it's given location data. For example, I've downloaded this data set of UFO sightings globally from Kaggle, and then I've uploaded it into ChatGPT code interpreter. And we can actually get a geolocation map of the entire world showing some hotspots of supposed UFO activity. We can then in real time, ask ChatGPT to zoom in on specific locations, like for example, the United Kingdom, and see exactly what's happening in different locations and areas and map it over different cities or land marks, which is just super, super cool. And if you've got lots of data from things like your Shopify store or people visiting your website from Google Search Console or Google Analytics, it's a really nice touch to be able to analyze that in real time where those websites might just give you static pages showing you the locations of people who might be using your products or website. Now, whether you're learning to code or are actually building something, Code Interpreter is a complete game changer here. You can actually upload all of your files in a zip document and then get the entire thing analyzed and critiqued by ChatGPT. And then you can work on improving things and optimizing your code. If you're just starting out, you might want to download some code from GitHub in a zip file and then upload it and get ChatGPT to explain things to you. If you're a little bit more advanced and are running your own projects or coding something for a company and you're stuck, you can upload anything you're working on into ChatGPT and a little bit like having a programmer next to you to explain things in simple terms, it can actually point things out that you might have missed. In this case, I've used some Python code that I coded with my pretty janky coding skills that I've then put into a zip file and I've then uploaded it and it's not just code analysis that Code Interpreter can handle. You can actually ask it to create code from scratch, just like you can with vanilla ChatGPT. But in this instance, it will actually output a file. So for example, we could get ChatGPT to create a manifest file for a ChatGPT plugin, and then Code Interpreter will actually produce this file, whether it's a JSON or a zip file containing all of the lines of code. We can then look at that ourselves, host it on a local environment and test it, or we could host it on the cloud and then run more code through ChatGPT to then interact with that hosted code and produce something like a ChatGPT plugin, such as a habit tracker, which I've got a great video on that's definitely worth checking out. Now we looked at some of the use cases around uploading images to Code Interpreter earlier on, but I just wanna dive into the full manipulation of images that you can do and also look at video. So if we take our image that we outputted through mid-journey of our AI puppy, we can actually put this back in and pull out a lot of data and information, as well as changing things like the size, cropping that image, spinning it round, and even changing the color palette and shading of the image itself. With video, you can do exactly the same thing. I've taken my image of a puppy and run it through Runway ML to create a new video from an image-based prompt. So here we've got a four second image of a puppy sitting outside in a field and we can download this as an MP4 file. I can then upload this back into Code Interpreter and actually get that clip to be shortened even further. So here I'm asking for it to be a three second clip and I'm cutting off the last bit so we just get the first three seconds of this video. And as you can see when it's output, it's done exactly that for us. We can also do things like turning the video around or even changing the video file format or just pulling out the audio if we've got a video with audio. You can also get ChatGPT and Code Interpreter to reduce things like GIFs, though this is still in the very early stages. Remember, while Code Interpreter is really great, it's still in beta and it doesn't always do exactly what you want, like this slightly cursed image of my puppy. When you upload a file, it's also worth mentioning that this is held in a temporary storage area and if you're working on a big project like I was when I was playing around with lots of data, sometimes that file can be lost and then it irritatingly asks you to re-upload things or just forgets other lines of code that it had created in the past and this can drag that project out for longer than it needs to be. Now that being said, Code Interpreter is still an absolutely amazing tool and if you're working with large data sets, it's going to be completely revolutionary and it's going to save us so much time in the future. And if you want to learn about more ways that you can save tons of time and be more productive by using ChatGPT, I'll put up this video over here, which is a deep dive into some of my favorite ChatGPT prompts that's definitely worth checking out. Thanks so much for subscribing and for watching today's video, and I'll catch you again next time.